In this video, I will briefly describe the jigsaw method and uh, an example activity that falls under that method. Jigsaw activities are some of my favorite classroom activities because they're highly dynamic, they're highly versatile, they cover multiple skills. They can turn a reading or listening lesson into a lesson that practices reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Um, they require careful planning, but in the end, it's worth it. There are countless different forms that a jigsaw activity can take, but they all follow one general pattern of steps. The first step is to divide a text into three to five different sections. This can be done with different listenings, but it's usually done with a reading. Um, you're going to give each learner in your class a different section of the text, and their job is to become an expert on that section. This can be done individually, or it can be done in groups, uh, or both. Uh, I prefer to start individually and then put them into groups to become experts together, as in the example I'm going to show you. The most important step is that you create complete jigsaw puzzle groups. This is what makes an activity a jigsaw activity. You create groups that contain at least one member for each section of the text, and uh, each expert shares their expertise in those groups, and there's different activities that they can do in those groups. Uh, and finally, there should be some sort of project to, to show that there is general comprehension of the entire text. That project can be done as a group or as an individual, and I'll talk about some examples when I show you my example jigsaw activity. For my example jigsaw activity, uh, I have here a text. This text should look familiar to those of you in the course. It is called the VARC Learning Modalities. It has an introductory paragraph, and then it describes each of the four main learning modalities, visual, aural, auditory, read-write, and kinesthetic. Uh, readings like this are very common in ESL materials, uh, where you have an introductory paragraph and then sort of a list, and they're great for jigsaw activities because they're easily separable into different groups. To that end, I have cut them up into slips, so I have several copies of each one of the different styles cut into slips that I can hand to the learners. And here you see an example setup of a classroom. The teacher is at the bottom center, and we have what we call a horseshoe seating arrangement, and I love this seating arrangement uh, to make the classroom communicative and everyone can see each other and easily converse with each other. At this point, uh, the teacher standing in front of the room will read the VARC learning modalities introductory paragraph, show the class the entire text, and then hand out individual reading slips to the learners starting from left to right. So I'll give the first learner the visual, the next learner will get the aural, and then the read-write and the kinesthetic, and roll repeat, visual, aural, read-write, kinesthetic. They're receiving their individual section of the text. At this point, I will tell them they have perhaps five minutes to read their text. I want them to mark any words that they don't know, maybe underline any sentences that they're having trouble comprehending, but they're reading alone for about five minutes. At the end of that five minute period, I will tell them to stop. I will say, if you have the visual information, I want you to go to that corner. And the learners will move there. I'll say, I want my auditory oral experts to move to this corner here. And then I'll have my read-write experts come to this side and the kinesthetic experts here. And now you can see we have four groups that represent the experts for each section of the text. And at this point, they're going to work together for comprehension. They can ask each other questions about things they didn't understand. They can work together to try to comprehend the difficult vocabulary. And the teacher will walk around and help them with that. Um, it's important you can tell them that they need to be prepared to lecture about the content of their part of the text without the text. As I tell them that they will not be able to use the text, I don't want them to lean on it, and I certainly don't want them reading it word for word. So that in their groups they need to be preparing each other for individual lecturing. At this point we're ready to jigsaw. So I will look at each group and I will number them. First with the read-write group, I want you to number one two and three, so one, two, three. Good, kinesthetic, will you number one, two, three? The visual group, I want one, two, three, and I don't need four, I'm gonna ask for another one. Then the aural group, one, two, three, and I don't want too many ones, so I'm gonna ask for another two. At this point, we're ready to regroup. Um, can I have my number ones right here? Uh, my number twos come over here into a group, and my number threes our group right here. You can see now we have three little, little bit larger groups and each group has at least one expert for each section of the text and they're going to work together 
take turns sharing their expertise. Often I'll do this very formally. I will say, because visual is the first section of the text, um, I'm going to give the visual expert three minutes to lecture, and the other students are to listen carefully, take notes, save their questions for the end. And we'll take turns doing that, three minutes for each expert in the group to present their information. Um, as I mentioned, each jigsaw group should have, each jigsaw activity should have a project at the end and some possibilities for that. Answer random order questions. Now, normally when you create a question worksheet for a reading, you want those questions to appear in the exact order that the information appears in the text, but that's not the case for Jigsaw. You can give them a worksheet with random ordered questions, or you can cut your worksheet up into slips. And that way, they have to read the questions together and try to figure out which expert has the information to answer that question. We can also task them with writing a group summary. Something I've done is given each group a large piece of butcher paper, and I have them work together to create a summary of the entire text that we can hang up on the wall. That's a great thing to do if you can hang those summaries up on the wall at the end of a lesson. You can then give each learner the entire text to read at home for homework. So in the next class, they come in and at one point you can say, we've all read this text, let's together decide which one of these group created summaries uh, was the best one. Another thing you can do is you've had them take notes from their other experts, you can ask them to write individual summaries. It's really important that if you're going to do this, you tell them ahead of time that you want them to do that so that they know they have to take very careful notes. They're going to have to write a summary of the entire reading, even though they've only read about one quarter of it. They have to rely on the experts in their group to um, orally present that information to them. They have to listen carefully and take good notes so that they can create that summary based off of their knowledge and the notes that they took from the other members of their group. I may also give my students some comprehension questions or maybe a graphic organizer that they can fill out as they listen to the other experts explain their part of the text. Here's an example of a graphic organizer that would work well with this particular text. So that is my example activity that falls under the jigsaw method. As I said before, I love jigsaw activities because of their versatility, their dynamicism, and the fact that they practice multiple skills. They do require careful planning, but it is worth it, and I encourage you to experiment with the jigsaw method in your classroom.